Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, then please press that subscribe button and like the video. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to build an app just like Reddit. I'm gonna keep it simple, but I'm gonna show you how you can build your own app that supports forums and it allows users to create new forums and then other users can create posts inside of the forums and then discuss it between themselves. So this is gonna be a really cool video and I hope you guys enjoy it. It's gonna show you how to build your own forum and how to create an app similar to Reddit. All right, to get started, I'm just gonna open up the terminal and I'll make sure that I'm zoomed in so you can read the text okay. Then I'm gonna type in Rails new and I'm gonna call our app just Reddit. Then I'm gonna pass in the database option with dash D. I'm gonna set that to PostgreSQL. And then I'm gonna pass in the CSS option with dash C. I'm going to set that to Tailwind. Now I'm going to let that run and generate the app for us. Now that this is completed, we can CD into the app and I'll start the server with bin slash dev. This will allow us to open up the browser and then go to localhost 3000 and we'll see that our server is running but we're seeing this error because the database has not been created. So every time you create a new Rails app and you're using PostgreSQL, uh, the first thing you need to do is just create the database. So we can click that button right there and that'll do that. Now that everything's set up, uh, we see the Rails logo. So this means that we're ready to start coding our app. So for our app, we're really gonna have a few models. Uh, we're gonna have user model, we're gonna have a forum model, and then probably a forum is going to have um, chats. You know, so you, you create a new chat, you label it, and then anybody can join and talk about whatever you're talking about. But the first thing that we're going to add is the user. So to set up users, I'm going to use the device gem because that keeps it really simple. So we can go into the terminal and we can type in bundle add device. This will add the gem to our app. And then after that, we can type in rails g device colon install. This will do everything to install it actually into our app. And then from here, there's a few steps that they recommend you to do, like set the root of the app and also add in the alerts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy these alerts and I'm gonna go and drop them in our app. So I'll open up the app in VS Code. I'll go and open this up. And now we're gonna go into the app folder, the views and the layouts, into the application.html.erb. Now inside of here, right at the top of the body, we're going to render a new partial for layout slash alerts. Now to get this to show up, we're going to have to add a new file called underscore alerts.html.erb. Just right in the layouts folder, and then we can add uh, just a simple code for the notice and the alerts. The other thing that they recommend is to do Rails Devise the views command so we can customize the sign in and sign up pages. So I'll probably do that because I usually do that in these videos. So I'm going to generate the device views. And now we have everything for device setup, but we don't have the user model. So to do that, you type in Rails G device user. And then you can pass any additional options too. Uh, we're probably gonna have, I think I'll just call it a username. So we'll generate that model and then we'll migrate the database. Now we can start the server up again. Now we're still on the Rails screen, so actually I'm gonna go and create a quick landing page. So to do that, I'll just go back in the terminal and I'll generate a controller. Uh, I'll call it pages and it'll have a home action. So we generated that, but now I need to set that as the root. So I'll go back in the code and open up the config folder and go to the routes.rb. And now you'll see we have this route that was added from the generator at the top. Uh, it's, it's getting pages slash home, but I really want to set this as a root. So I'll just delete that and I'll go down here to the bottom 
uh, where the root was commented out. So I'll uncomment it, and then I'll change this to pages home. So now the root of our app will go to this home page. So now we see everything's working. I can even go here and change some of that text up. So I'll go back in the app, open up the views folder, and now we have this pages folder. And inside of it, we have a home.html.erb uh, file. So I'll go in here and I see my text. So I'll just change this to Reddit. And yeah, connect with other people in forums that you like. It's going to be really cool to, to kind of see how you could build something like this. So underneath uh, just that, I'm going to add in a sign in button. This is going to go to the new user session path. Now add some basic styling. So I'm just adding blue background and we'll do some light blue text and a little bit of rounded. Now I do want to put all the stuff in the center. So let's quickly center it. We go to this top div, say with full flex flex call item center. Now this centers everything and I, maybe I want to make this button a little bit wider. So for that I can just say I'll give it a width and then the text is going to be off so I want to say text center to make sure it's in the center. Just like that we have a little nice sign in button. We can even add a little space by just adding a break tag. Now we can sign in and we see the sign in page but it's not really that pretty so I can quickly uh, style that up by going to the device page in the sessions new. And let's just wrap this all of this uh, login code in a div and then I'll add some styling to just give it a max width and then margin on the left and right to push it and then also some margin on the top what that's going to look like is it's going to push it to the center, but I also want to center all of these. So for that, I'm going to use flex. And we're going to use the flex call option and item center. That'll center everything nicely. And to do the same for the sign up page, we can just copy that div, go over to the registrations page, drop it in, and just make sure to wrap all this code and then close it off. Now we have a centered sign up page too. So this is pretty nice and we could go further and customize this make this more pretty you know style the the submit button or the sign up button itself because right now it's just really ugly but i'm just going to keep this simple and oh one thing i see is we don't have the option to set a username up here so to do that we can go to oh we're going to want to update on the registrations and we can do well, let's go let's put it underneath the email what we're going to need is a text field for the username and then we can set the autocomplete uh, sure although that doesn't really matter okay so now we have the username that we can add here when we're signing up we probably also want to validate in the model to make sure well, for one, the username should be unique, but also it should every user uh, should set a username. Or maybe we'll do a default, but at least let's do the uniqueness. So let's validate uniqueness of username. So this will just ensure that every person's username is unique. And then we might want to generate one if they don't do it. Or we could actually do that on the view. Uh, we might have uh, something, but I don't know. Let's just go and create this first user. Sign up. Okay, perfect. We signed in. Looks like welcome. You've signed up successfully. Uh, although, I don't think it saved the username. Yeah, see, if we go into the console, we'll see that the parameter wasn't uh, allowed in the device controller. So to permit that, we actually need to add some custom code So I'm just going to go into one of my recent apps and try to uh, grab that reference. Yeah, it's just this bit of code. 
and I'll show you that right now. So if we go into the controllers, the application controller, we need to add this code. So it's a before action that only gets triggered on the device controller. And inside of this, we're just basically permitting the username key for sign up. Just as simple as that. And that'll allow our username to be saved because right there, we didn't actually save the username even though we signed up. So actually, I'm going to need to sign out. Uh, we might want to have that in the nav bar. So we can add a quick nav bar. Uh, I'm just going to quickly uh, get out all these files. But actually, for the nav bar, we're going to do it in the application file, so the one I was just in. But if you need to get there, it's in the app folder, views, and then the layouts. And inside of here, we have the application file. And we're just going to create a new partial right up above the alerts. We're going to create one for nav bar. And then I'm going to also create that file in the layouts folder, underscore navbar.html.erb. And I'll just add some basic styling. I'm going to do flex, uh, item center. I'm just going to horizontally center them. And then we'll do some padding too. Justify between is going to push them apart. So we're going to have one link uh, on the left, which would be a link to home. That's just going to go to slash. We can just do basic styling. I think I'm just going to do a really basic nav bar. Maybe have it like darker and then the links are light. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so we have the nav bar. And then on the other side, we can do a check if current user. Then we could display. Let's try to display the username. And if there's no username, we can do or the email because this guy's not going to have a username or we could even say or no username set just so you can see there's no username set for this guy and also style this um, make it lighter what i wanted to do is add a, a sign out link to you can just do that right next to this link to sign out. This is going to go to the destroy user session path. I'll just do uh, some slight styling. And then the most important part is adding the data turbo method and setting the act, setting it to delete. Because this is going to make your link trigger a delete request, which is very important. So now we see we have the sign out. Oh, but it's pushing our username in the center. That's because of the justify between. So if we don't want that to happen, we'll actually add another div. And then we'll center these items again. And then I'll add a little gap just to push them apart. So what I'm doing is I'm adding another div just to wrap the username and the sign out link. Uh, so the flex will be pushing the home and then the, this set of um, items on the side. Okay, so that's working good. We can sign out, boom, just like that. Uh, we're not signed in anymore. And then if we want to go sign in, or I'm actually going to sign up for a new guy because I want my username to save. And since we added that piece of code, now the username saves. If you look up here, we'll see my username's new guy. Perfect. Uh, but now we don't want to see this home page anymore now that we're signed in. So actually to do that, uh, we'll just go into the code. We'll open up the config folder and the routes.rb. And then down at the bottom, we had set that initial route to the pages home. But we can add this code right here that what this does is it, whenever the user is authenticated, we can set a new route. And this new route is where the user is going to end up after they're signed in. So the route for us, I think we're going to do the forums index. And then I'll just have to create that forum model. Let's go into the console. Uh, whoops. And then 
up here we're going to type in rails g scaffold and we're going to create a model called forum now a forum is going to have uh, it's going to have a name of the forum and we can add a description description we can do type rich text which just means it's a more advanced text editor that's built in with rails <clears throat> and also user belongs to well because yeah users are going to be creating the forms and then that user would just be uh, the forum creator and then we might want to think about adding moderators and other sort of privileges later but i think this is good for right now so we just have a forum name description user belongs to we can scaffold that and then migrate the database start the server up again and we should end up on the forum index okay so we are so now as this guy if i want to go and create my own forum i'll click here oh and we get this error uh, because we need it uh, since we added action text we need to go in the console and run rails action text colon install which sets up everything for action text and active storage after we did that we can run rails db migrate real quick and then we're good to go if we go back refresh we won't see the error anymore we just see our form to create the new forum this is pretty exciting but one thing we see is there's a user option we didn't want that it was just added because of uh, i guess how the scaffold works uh, it added the user id so to change this let's just open up the code again now let's go into that new uh, forums folder so we can go into the app folder the views and then the forums in the forums form and then down here where we have uh, the this field for the user id let's just completely delete that because we don't want a user being able to set any anybody as the owner so now that we have that we just have this basic forum styling and we can create our first forum so i think for us let's create one called ruby on rails because that's the language and framework that i'm using so it's everything to do with ruby on rails we create it oh we got this error already user must exist okay so let's go and fix this so now that we change that code in the in the view let's go also into the controllers so if you go it's in the app controllers and the forms controller and we need to set the user so right here on the create action we're actually setting form equals form.new instead we can say current user.forms.new now the way that this works is it's going to set the association off of the user but we need to add that in the model because when we scaffolded for the forum if we go and look at this model for the forum it has this line right here it belongs to user but if we go to the user model it doesn't have any reference to the forum uh, because the scaffold just uh, i guess it doesn't know how to update that right so we can add it by hand by going to the user model and then writing has many forums now let's refresh and we should be good to go oh and then one last thing in the forums controller go all the way to the bottom uh, into the private section and the forum params and we need to delete the user id from the permitted attributes uh, this is important because uh, if you don't change that it means that well, you're just more vulnerable to security risks uh, because users could they could create forums and set it on other user IDs and that could be a you know a negative forum or something I don't know so let's go back here so we haven't created any forums yet but we should be good to go to create our first forum I'm gonna say everything to do with Ruby on Rails and coding so I'm gonna create that forum now this is what our forum looks like right now <laughs> it's not really anything like uh, reddit but that's okay because that's what we're going to add we're going to fix this so even on the, then on the index page it doesn't really look like uh you know reddit uh, let's start with on the index page then so let's make this show up just in a little bit of a like a thinner rectangle i feel like that's how reddit usually shows up So to do that, let's go and open the forums index. So to get there, we can go into the app, the app folder, the views folder, forums, and then the index.html.erb. Now in here, you'll see that we're 
all we're doing is just rendering this forums uh, object. So we go into the underscore forum partial. This is where we want to be styling. Uh, let's change the page. Right, so right now we just have these three columns and you can see how it's set up. There's margin Y of five. There's kind of a good bit of margin separating each of these. But I feel like we could easily clean this up, right? So all we really need is, I feel like uh, it would be nice to have uh, the title just in big text and then the description kind of a little bit smaller, right? That sounds like some basic styling. So to do that, let's delete the, the strongs from in here. So we're just displaying the description and the forum name and we're putting it in P's. Uh, that's probably not how we do it, but uh, let's leave it. Let's refresh. Okay, now it's a little bit better. Oh, you know what? I also want to delete the links. I don't think we just, I don't think we need these on this partial at all. all right, so now this is what it looks like. Uh, it's not really much to look at. Let's add a, a background color. Let's say BG gray 300. And we can do a little bit of padding. Uh, you know, I'll do P, P2, or PY2, PX4. So it's going to have more on the left and right. And I also want to push it down. So let's add a, let's just add a break on the index right above the div for the forums. So now it shows up like this. And I want to make the title a lot bigger. So we'll go in here to the P tag. I want to say like text 3XL. So now we see Ruby on Rails, everything I do with Ruby on Rails and coding. So this kind of looks more like, you know, what I might expect from a forum. But I think what we'll do is we'll turn this whole, the whole div into a link. So to do that, we can just wrap the div in a link to, and we can actually just point it right to the forum. And then let's uh, say do to make this a block. And then we'll just wrap all of the HTML. Reload. And that's how you turn that into a, a link. So see it show like this. And then if we want to create a new forum, maybe this is for JavaScript. our forum go back to the home page okay and it's right here you know what i want to add a little bit of gap between these so let's go back to the index page right here we have this thing min with full we can leave that but let's add a flex flex call and then gap of four so what this is going to do is flex call uh, well flex makes it go in a row flex call makes it go horizontal stack and then gap adds space between each uh, item just like this and see if we if we didn't do flex call, I'll just show you real quick. It would try to put them in a row. That's why I'm doing flex call instead. Uh, and also so I can use the gap because if I don't do flex, uh, I don't think I can use gap. Whoops. But yeah, see gap doesn't work unless you use that or you use grid. Okay. So we have this set up, we have the JavaScript forum, we got the Ruby on Rails forum. Now I just wanna go and style the actual forum page because that's not how I'd want it to look. Well, it's almost, but we can go to the show page and let's not render forum because what that's gonna do is it's gonna just render the partial. We also don't need this notice because we already have notices in our app. And then to edit this forum, we might wanna have this edit and destroy, but that's only for the for the owner, right? Edit and destroy. And we're probably gonna put wanna put that somewhere else. Uh, so actually, I'll just delete this whole thing, like the, the mid width, all of that. Let's see what that looks like. So just edit, destroy this forum, back to forums. So let's wrap the edit and the destroy in a condition we'll check if current user equals to app forum dot user. So we'll only show it for the owner of the forum. And then if you're not the owner, you can still see back. But I really want to put this in almost like a, a corner. But usually on a on a forum, you'll see a banner at the top. And it does kind of look like like uh, what we built kind of over here. So to do that real quick, let's just go to the top of the show page. Uh, we can go outside of the div. 
And let's just give this a, a well, set height and width full. Take up the whole width. Let's just give it a background real quick. And I want to see what that looks like. Okay, so it's not going on the top like I wanted. The reason being, we never deleted the container. So when you use the Tailwind option in Rails, it adds this main div with some styling to the application file. So we just want to delete that because we don't want that styling. So we'll delete that main container. And now we see uh, we're getting that div at the top. So if you go back in that show page, I'm going to actually make this different than the navbar color. But we can see we have that div at the top. And then inside of that, I would probably put h1 and then we'll just display the form name okay so we have our h1 with the form name and then see it's right on this corner so i'm going to try to center it uh, for that we can use flex uh, let's just do flex and then we'll say justify center item center uh, and that'll center the text and then we could choose like uh, you know, any other styling, maybe coloring. And then underneath this, we can do, I'll just do a P, and we'll add that forum.description. Oh, but oh, since we're using flex, uh, see it's putting in a row, so I want to stack it. So let's change it to flex call. And just like that, we have a little bit better, and then I can even do a, a break, or I could do mar margin, just to separate these. But now you'll see we have uh, this top banner. So I feel like that's usually what it looks like. And then we could have these links just over on the right. So to do that, instead of uh, margin X, let's do margin left. Uh, it looks like that's not working. I have to give it the flex. I'm going to add a quick background and see what's happening. Oh, it looks like it's already taking up the full width, uh, apparently. So we could just say justify end to push all of them to the end. And item center because you'll see uh, they're not all centered. Well, still, it looks like there's an issue. I think, oh yeah, this one has margin left. But for the back button. Mm, okay, let's just delete the back, but back to forms because uh, nobody's really going to use that. We'll just have the edit and the destroy for the owner. Now you can go here and actually I want to, now that we deleted that uh, container, everything is taking up the full width. So we need to add our own, um, our own width to this forums index. So I'll go back to this index page and right here, instead of width full, we say max width 5XL MX auto and then add some margin top uh, and we'll get it to look like this and then when you click on uh, when you click on the form you want to go to uh, you'll see it and then there will probably be an option uh, to start like adding posts so let's go and add the post to the form so we'll go into the console and we'll generate another or actually all scaffolds rosg scaffold posts a post is going to have a title, it's going to have a body of rich text, and it's also going to have a user belongs to, and it's also going to have a forum, a forum belongs to. So every post is going to belong to a user and a forum, and it's going to have, you know, title body. We can scaffold that and migrate the database. Start the server again. Now we don't really see anything different here. But I can add that uh, form here. But I'm going to want to modify that scaffold quickly. Because that scaffold, um, you'll see what it looks like. But let's just add a, let's add a new post link to here. So to do that, we can go into the form show page again. And I'll do it. Make sure you do it outside of the condition, but I'll do it in the same div. Let's just say link to create post. Now the path that we're going to have is new post path. 
that's the one that we have set right now but i'll show you why that is actually an issue so add some simple styling refresh oh no i need some gap to this Add all this styling with the with the uh, tailwind scaffolds. I don't know. I don't really like that. Py three. Okay, there we're good. So we have this option to uh, create the post. Oh, also, if these ever get cut off on mobile, we should do. Right now we're doing flex, we want to say flex wrap, just in case we need to wrap them for like for smaller screen sizes. Anyways, when you go and press this create post, you go to this new forum, but you'll see it has these same issues that we saw before, like it, it has the link, or it has the field for a user and a forum. So we actually don't want to display this. We want it to already know that we're creating the post for the forum. And actually we could even have that form show up right on the same page in line. I feel like that would be a better experience. So to do all of this, well, let's first go and remove these fields, the user and the form. So to do that, we can go into the app and the views folder, and let's go over to the post folder and the form partial. And you'll see we have all the different fields here, but at the bottom we have these two fields for user ID, form ID. So we just wanna remove that completely. So we only have two fields now for title body. And then the next part we'd edit is in the controller. So if we go over here to controllers, and then we have the post controller. So inside here, we're just keeping it really basic with post equals post new. But now we're gonna need to see like, so we need the user, which is current user. So we already have that, but we also need the forum which we don't have with this URL, just slash posts. So the way we can fix all of this, it actually starts back in the routes file. So we go to the config routes.rb, we'll see we have resources posts, resources forums, and the right side by side. But I wanna change it so that uh, whenever you go to create a new post, it's nested in a forum. So we can do that by adding a block to resources forums and then just moving the resources posts inside of the resources forums. And just like that, we fix the URL. And if we go back to the post controller, uh, we can actually do a before action and we'll say set forum. And then way down here at the bottom, we can create that new method set forum. And inside here, we'll say forum equals forum.find params forum ID. And then in the create, I think what we'll do is we'll say at post equals current user dot post dot new, or we could say at forum dot post dot new. Uh, yeah, we could let's say forum dot post dot new, and then we'll say at post dot user equals current user. And then down here we would save, and then on the update action, well everything's set up because it's just using. Oh, except for in the set post. So here's what they're using for everything except for create. There's a method called set post, which is getting the post by the ID, which we could do that, but I want to do it off the forum. So say forum.post, uh, find it by the ID. And that's how we set it. Just like this, everything should be set up. But if we go back to our show page, I will actually get an error now because that new post path doesn't exist since we changed it in the routes. So we have to go back to the forums show page and change the new post path to instead be new forum posts or new forum post path and then we pass in the forum. Now we refresh, we click on create new forum. Oh, we also get undefined method post path in the, in the form itself. Let's go to the post form. So in the views folder, posts folder, and the form, or the underscore form file. 
up here at the top we're saying form with model post so whenever it tries to make the url that it needs for this uh, it's having a hard time so we can either do the uh, url by hand or we can just pass in the forum before which also means we need to pass it in from the new when we're rendering so right here we pass in forum as a local to the partial so you want to do that in the new and also the edit pass in the form and then we can access that inside of the form partial now if we reload oh we're actually getting an error because of what is that oh on the new page uh, at the bottom there's a link back to posts but actually the post path is not that's not what we want to do so let's just say back to forum right and then we just say that it goes to the forum see that's pretty easy but what I want to do actually now that we have this working I can create say like first post I think coding is awesome I created my post oh okay so we get this error now it doesn't know about the association and that goes back to the same thing I've been telling you where the scaffold doesn't know how to update the association so when we created this post uh, inside of here it belongs to user and forum but those models don't know that they have that available so we need to set that in the user model let's go and set that has many posts and the forum model also has many posts now we'll refresh and we have to actually I'll create this again create post and oh okay i really should i really should have fixed this right away uh but it's just another thing where we need to update a, a URL in the controller. So we go to the post controller. Well, we're actually trying to redirect to post, but I would, after we create the post, for now, let's redirect to forum. And then we can do the same for the update. And actually just all of, all of the possible options. Let's just redirect to forum. So we say new post. create the post and it says post is created but I don't see any post here because we haven't started rendering it so let's render all the posts underneath these links so if we go back to the views the forums and the show page right underneath this div we can add another one and we'll start rendering those posts so I'll just give it a max width do some margin left and right to center it and then margin top to push it away from the links and inside of here, we can say at forum.posts.each do post. Now, inside of here, we have a loop for the posts. So we could even style this inline or we could do a partial. I'll probably render post and I'll pass in post. And that'll allow us to go into the forums and create that post with the underscore post.html.erb partial. And essentially, this would look very similar to uh, the forum partial, like very similar, but let's just build this out. So it would have a width full, then it would have some sort of height. Then we can use flex, justify center, just to push everything. Although we might not want to have it in center, because actually usually it's, usually it's left centered on forums, but we'd have the same, like we'd have a, Let's just use a span for now, but we'd have a bigger text, which is the title. That would stick out and it'd be post.title. And then we'd have a smaller one where we, we could have the body, but we probably only want to get like the first few characters. But let's get to that after. Okay, so we see our post is showing up. Uh, it's not... Because I used flex, it's not stacking, so let's change it to flex call. And then it might want a little bit more than 20, or it might want a little more than 16, so I'll go 24. And let's give it a background, so we can see how it sticks out. Oh, and let's also give it, so let's add some gap. So on this main div, let's change this to, um, let's use grid this time. And then we'll do gap 4. And see now it kind of separates it. Oh, we could also do padding on uh, the 
post partial. Could add a little bit of padding just to push it in. And you'll see my first post. So there's a different few posts, and then maybe we might have who posted it at the bottom. Oh, and also like the time too. Just say post.user.username. by uh, but you see we're kind of running out of space uh, we might want to have uh, let's just give it a little bit more space so we might think about this later but we'll see my first post then we have that uh, the body of it although we probably want to limit that eventually so let's see if we can do that right now can we only take the first 30 letters no because it's rich text so it doesn't know about that, but I think we can get, can't we just say dot text? I know there's some way to get the pure text content. Uh, we might have to go experiment. So let's open up Rails console and let's figure out how we can get that pure text. So I'll just say the post dot last. I want the body. But I want to somehow get the only the text. Let's check the methods. Oh, okay. So to plain text. It looks like that's a method. Just like that. So all we need to do is inside of there, inside of this partial, we can say to plain text. And then we can grab the first certain amount of characters. Start the server again. And that way, just in case someone creates uh, a really long post. So I'll, I'll do that real quick. A long post. And I want to get some lorem, lorem ipsum. Oops. I mean, we could really add any text, but this is probably an easy way. Oh, and they want me to turn my ad block off. Sure. Let's just take what they have there. Create post. And then now you'll see, we could probably even allow a little bit more text because see it gets cut off way down there. But also, uh, we can add the date. But as you see, like the old, the uh, it's not being ordered newest post first, which I think that's how we should order it. Uh, but first, let's go to the post partial. Let's quickly add that date. So to do the date. I'll just uh, make sure that isn't too big and I'll say posted and then there's a method in rails time ago in words which allows you to pass in a date which we're gonna do the post created at and then it'll tell you how long ago it was uh, in words so this is posted six minutes and then we can add a go at the end of it so posted six minutes ago this one was posted one minute ago. So the one that's posted one minute ago should really be at the top. So to fix that styling, we can go to the show page and where we're rendering forum.post, that's order by created at, and we'll do descending. So actually like the newer posts would get shown first. And then if we want to show the older ones, we could just change it over to ascending. And we might have a filter too, to be able to do that. Now this UI does not look very good, but it just depends like how, how the forum UI usually looks, you know what I mean? And I don't really usually spend that much time on Reddit, but one thing we do is instead of limit at 20, we can give it a little bit more, maybe 50. We could do something and we could also truncate it too. So just in case it, uh, overflows we have the option to truncate it it's like 200 would be too much oh and actually truncate's not working let's try text ellipsis mm. that one doesn't really work either i have a hard time with some of these uh, text overflow things like they never usually tend to work where does it come from Posted by new guy, okay. <clears throat> One thing I think that could make it look better though is if we move these over to like 
left and right. So to do that, we can actually put this back to flex, but then wrap uh, the first two links in their own div, and then the second links in another div. They're not really links, but they're just like information about the post. And then inside of those divs, we'll make those Flex, flex call, or we could do grid. You see, now we have this, the new post, and then we might want to make these take up like width one half each. We have long posts. Where does it come from? Posted by this guy. And I feel like usually it might be, it would have this, and then maybe. It would use like the avatar instead. Anyways, this is just trying to get a basic start to this. I feel like this might be fine if we just do overflow or if we hide the overflow too. We're already hiding it on here, so that should be fine. What we can do is we can change these to a link so when you click on the post, it brings you to the posts page. Because then I think we're gonna add, like a post will have many other posts inside of it. So to turn this post into a link, we can just wrap it and we'll say link to, it's gonna go to that show page, but actually since we nested it, we need to pass in two things. We need to pass the post.forum and then we'll pass the post itself add a block and we'll wrap this whole HTML into a link. Now we're able to click and go to the forum. Oh, we get the error. It's just another one of the URL. Since we changed all the URLs, we're getting some of these issues. So actually I'll just delete those things. Or wait, no, that's not, it's on the, it's on the post show page. So like the edit post is wrong. Uh, let's just fix that actually. So we'll just delete the path and we'll just pass in, pass in forum and post and it should be able to figure that out. Now it's the next one about destroying. It doesn't know that either. So you just pass in same thing and then back to post instead of back to post. It's more like back to forum. All right. Let's see very at the bottom. We've edit, destroy, back to forum. Now edit and destroy, we don't want to have anybody show that, so we'll only say, we'll add a condition over those links that, that checks if current user equals to post.user. Or we could actually also check to see uh, if it's the forum owner. So this is where it gets more tricky. We might want to even add a method for this. So we could add a method like post. We could just add a method called allowed to edit and then we'll pass in the user. Then we'll go to the post model and we'll write that method. Now inside of this method, we can do some checks. So we'll return true if current user is equal to user. So that's if the current user is the same as the post user. And we'll also return true if current user is equal to forum.user. Otherwise, it'll just be false. So they're only allowed to edit, you know, if the if the user was the one who posted or if they're the one who created the forum. And I think that makes sense. So then we'll see, this is what the post page looks like, which is fine, but we can definitely clean this up a lot, a lot, a lot. So let's go into the post show page. And well, we really, for one, we don't need to notice. And right off the bat, delete that. And then we're rendering this post partial, which I guess is fine. So if we go inside of the post partial, we have all the same stuff that usually gets added, which we don't need a lot. Like we don't need these descriptive uh, keys. You know what I mean? We can just delete that and instead just have the title 
and let's also make this really big and instead of a p we'll do h1 because actually h1s are very important it's important to use the correct uh, html tag for seo reasons so you want that to be the html or you want it to, to be a h1 so that when you're searching up for stuff on the internet it'll show that this is like the the topic of the page if you know what i mean and we'll have the post body you don't really want to style this much because this is already rich text so the person can style this in the thing and then we might want to add the user up here so there's the title let's bring this chunk up here although we're not really going to use a lot of this because we're going to delete the strong reduce the margin and then we'll say posted by instead of the user id the username oh whoops posted by not post that username post dot user dot username All right so we have a long post and then it's posted by a new guy that's fine we might uh make it a little bit bigger you know a long post posted by a new guy and then it starts right here and then we have the forum too we might want to display uh, the forum so why don't we just inside of posted by we can say two and then we'll say post.forum dot name forum posted by new guy to ruby on rails forum and then we have the text here and then the links but these links wouldn't show up it only shows up for the current user so let me show you what that looks like just to show you that these links are hidden. So if you go to a new incognito and we go to that same URL, you can see we can actually go here, but we don't have the option to edit. We only have the option to go back. Uh, we could actually create a post, which we don't want to create a post because we're not even signed in yet. So to lock that down, let's quickly do that. Let's go to the post controller. And we'll add a before action. Uh, authenticate is actually what it is authenticate user and then we might want to allow some of the pages to be viewed probably the only one is the show page though except show so you can show you can view a post but as soon as you try to edit it or create it then you're gonna have to sign in okay perfect so we have this set up we have our forums we have the different forums and then inside of it we have the posts uh, but the next big thing would be adding like multiple posts or almost like comments on the posts and to do something like that okay this is weird how the edit's not doing anything I think I might have uh, set this. Oh yeah, because I set this to forum.post, but it doesn't know that we have to edit it. So actually, I guess for that we can't. We have to actually specify edit forum post path and then pass in forum post. But for the destroy, we're able to do it like that with the array. So now we're able to edit. Oh, we still have now on the edit page. We didn't fix some of the routes. This is kind of getting kind of annoying. We can fix this and then back to post instead of back to post back to forum now we can go into that edit page and let's say we wanted to change some of these and here's where the rich text stuff comes in cool you can do stuff like you know lines quoting code lists and also uh, images so now let's say we want to add uh, like comments on a post let's just keep it simple and do comments because there's lots of ways that we could possibly do this now I'm gonna say LG model comment a comment is gonna have body rich text and then it's gonna belong to a post it's also gonna belong to a user So we're just going to create the comment model and then we can quickly just create the basic controllers. Uh, so down at the bottom, 
of the post show page. Let's just add a link to comment. Now comment, I'm just gonna give it a, a dummy URL for now because we haven't defined it. And just add some quick styling. We'll stick with the blue color. Let's see, comment doesn't really match the rest of the links because those paddings are, they have a lot more padding than mine. See, we have this option to comment down here. And then when I click on that, I want to go and go to the comment page. So to do that, let's start off in the route to RB. So we're in posts, posts we're going to actually do another block. Resources post do. Now add resources comments. Now a comment can have a new and it can have a create and maybe it has an edit later, but for right now, let's just worry about new and create. Now we're gonna have to go create another controller, comments controller to RB. Oops, comments controller, this is gonna inherit from the application controller. Now we're gonna have a new action and a create action. Now we're also gonna do a before action to set well, it's going to have set form and set post. We can add those here. Set forum. So at forum equals forum.find params forum ID. And then set post be at post equals at forum.post.find for the params post ID. So now that we've set these, uh, we can go into the new action. So a new comment, we can set comment equals post.comments.new. Now the post doesn't. All right, now that we have that comment model set up and we have the controller too. So in the routes, we have this nested controller. And we can go into the comments controller. We're setting the forum, we're setting the post. Now we're saying at comment equals post.comments.new. But real quickly, we need to add uh, the association in the post model. So with that generator, it does not add it uh, to the belongs to model. So we're going to say has many comments on the post. And we can do the same thing on the user model. So user has many uh, comments too. And if we go back to the comments controller, so on the new page, we just set the comment equals post.comments.new. But on the create page, we could do the same thing, but we'll pass in the comment params. We can define this down here. We'll say params.require comment. And then we're going to permit the attributes we want to be allowed to be changed. So for us, it's only the body. And I'll say if comment.save. Let's just redirect to the post. So for to get there, we'll just say forum post and then put it in this array. So if it saves, we redirect else. Let's render new and we'll just go back to that new form page. Now we don't have that those pages yet. So to do that, we can go to the views, create a new folder called comments. And the only one we need is the new .html .erb. And then inside of here, we'd have a form. So form with model, uh, why don't we pass in the post and then the comment. And inside of here, we could do f.label. So form label, uh, which is going to be for the body. And then we do f.rich text for body. I think it's rich text area. But we'll see. And then at the f.submit. So now let's go in. Let's fix this comment button so that it actually goes to the comment page. So on the post show page, we'll go in here into this comment where we had the dummy URL. And now let's change this to go to, it's going to be kind of a long one, but forum post comment path. Oh, and there's new at the beginning. So new forum post comment path. And we're going to pass it in the forum and the post. Now we probably didn't need to nest it in the 
in the form as well, but this works too. Oh yeah, so actually the undefined method post comments path. This is because we nested it in the form. Okay, let's not nest it in the form. So let's go back to route straight. Let's take this and then, well, this is more tricky, but we'll add more routes, but we actually, since we're adding resources post, we wanna say only and then pass in an empty bracket so it doesn't define any post routes. And inside of here, uh, we'll set the, the comments resources. So now we're not nesting it three layers deep. Like before we were, we were nesting it in forum, post, and then comments. But I think we only need to nest it underneath the post. So now this URL would work, but then on the show page, that URL wouldn't work. So we have to just get rid of the forum part. And also since we're not passing in forum in the controller, in the comments controller, we can get rid of the forum part. So we're no longer setting forum and instead of doing this, it's just post.find. Now, I don't know if this is gonna have any, any like issues or something with Rails. Okay, now we're getting the part to the, so we're seeing the form, but rich text just isn't an option. So I meant to say rich text area. Okay, now we see the comment form, although it's not styled very good. So let's try to center this real quick. Give it a max width, MX auto, flex call item center. Margin top. And we can even do a little header in here. Just say like, create a new comment. Okay, I like this. And we create it and we do that. We want it to actually go and save. It doesn't look like anything happened though. So it posted to the comments controller comment the body but I don't see it actually saving hmm post and it actually handles it. It just looks like something's not working. So we can debug this. Let's do a binding pry and actually we need to add that. So add bundle, add pry, pry rails in the terminal. And then I'll start the server with rails s instead of bin dev so that we can use the binding pry. I'm just coming here. Why isn't this saving? Okay, so if we look at the comment, oh, we're doing it, but we're never setting the user and the user is required. So that's simple enough. Straight after here, we can say comment.user equals current user. Say first comment, create it. Oh, oh we're trying to redirect to forum posts. That should be fine, right? Oh, do we not have forum anymore? Oh, that's one tricky part. So instead, we can do post.forum. Create the comment. Okay. And actually, it just redirected us to the, to the forum page, but I don't see the comments. So to add our own comments, all we have to do is go display it on the forum page. So we're under here, we could say post.comments.each do comments. Render comment, and we'll just pass in the comment. And we'll add our underscore comment dot html to be partial. Inside of here, we can add some styling. Let me add some color. And actually, I think for comment, I'll do 
width three quarters, and I'll try to do margin left, push it to the side, see if that works. And then we can just display the comment body. So yeah, now you can see our comments. And then we might wanna also have some sort of thing to say posted by, we can say the comment.user.username. Reload, and then we see first comment posted by this guy. And depending how you wanna style this, I'm just gonna do a little bit of margin away from the body. Oh, and then I'm gonna go back to the show page and I'm gonna wrap all these comments in some styling too. So I'll give it a flex, flex call, and I'll add some gap to position them. So see, we have the post and then we're showing the comments underneath. Uh, let's also do some margin. Now we might wanna have something that kind of says like, this is the comments. So that would just be maybe like H2. Let me say like, these are the comments. Oh, that's a bit large. We can either put that in or outside. It's probably outside. We can just give it its own margin. That was interesting. 2XL to 3XL is a pretty big difference. Or 2XL might just not be a thing. I thought it was. Uh... Oh, we're still using Res S. Uh, so with the Tailwind, you need to always be doing bin dev. The only reason I was using Rails S was um, to debug. But now you'll see actually our comments do have that smaller styling. Which right here, the, just the whole thing's already so small. I don't think we need to be this small. So that's because up at the top, there's this thing that's making it smaller. So let's get rid of that top div. And then now you see, it's a lot different. So actually, let's not get rid of it. But what we could do is, let's not do width two thirds. Let's do max width 5xl. And then we'll tell it to take up all of that, which will be about this much space. And we have the posted, we have the content, and then we have some comments. And I don't think the I don't think that that styling really makes sense with the width three fourths. All right, we could probably just make it take up the whole. And then maybe instead of a background color, we just have border bottom. I feel like I see that a lot in post. So there's just a little bit of separation. I think we could also do a HR horizontal slash. We could do that at the bottom here. HR. Yeah, and that also does a little line. So first comment, and if we want to do our new own comment, like, hey, this is a good post. Oh, and we'll show that this popped up right there at the bottom. I wanted to add like anything. I think this is a code block. So do like our we could actually write our little like code answer. Create a comment and then it'll just get displayed in that nice uh, code method. So yeah, there we go. We got comments added. Uh, probably another thing we could do for Reddit is like the upvote downvote but you've probably already seen how to do that in my other tutorials but i just wanted to get like the basic working bare bones of a forum and i feel like this looks pretty nice i'm happy with this we definitely could add that the upvote downvote though we could add that and that's actually pretty simple i'm thinking about it right now it's pretty simple so how we're going to do that for us Let's just go and so right wouldn't comments have upvote downvote too and then the forum would have one or not the forum but the post uh, let's just start with the post rating so not the comments but just the post so for that we can say rails g migration add score to posts the score is going to be type integer 
And now, before I migrate, I'm actually going to edit this to add a default score. So go into the DB folder, go to the latest migration, change this to default zero, or you could have copied the path and then press Command P, to search for it. We're gonna say default zero, and we're gonna migrate this database. Whoops. Uh, so we have to go back into our app. Bin slash dev, and now, Let's start off on the post, just just on the outside, let's have an upvote and a downvote option. So for that, I'm gonna check hero icons and see if they have anything for this, like arrows, they probably do. Just simple, simple arrows. Not micro. So just want simple, like arrow up, arrow down. So let's go to what would be on the forum show page. That's where we're rendering all the posts down here. So then we have the post partial. Inside of here, let's just have our first div. Although these are taking with half with half. They might get mad that we're taking a little bit of space from them. Well, why don't I just put it inside of here? We'll have another div. And then we'll add our upvote and downvote SVGs or icons. Oops. Oh, except for this div is flex call, so that's not gonna work. All right, let's put it on the outside. We have our little upvote. And I'll just wrap this in a div to make sure that it's only takes up that certain amount of width that I want. And then we can actually just start styling this. Let's add a quick, like a, another background on it. Let's give it some rounding. And we can also do some flex. Item center. I think this actually has some styling on it already for the width. Let's just tell it to take up the full width. Kind of looks like that now. So this would be the upvote. And then the downvote. Just be arrow down. Plop that in. Now we have these two links right here. We could probably do flex, flex call, gap four. Just like that. And then maybe we add some margin right just to push the text away. So now we have these two. We have like the upvote. Although one thing we see is since the whole thing is a link already, um, this isn't really going to work how we expected it. Unless there was some way to make these stand out. Which I think maybe that will already work if we just add a link. So let's add the link quickly. Okay, like link to, let's just do a blank URL. I don't know why I added all that styling, but yeah, that actually does work. But like adding that link seemed to, it added some margin or something. It was kind of weird. I have no idea why that's doing that. Oh, I think, ah, uh, so doing that is, you can't have a link inside of a link. <laughs> that should be probably pretty simple for most of you. I did not realize that, okay. So this is kind of more tricky. How can we get our link outside? Uh, we might want to just copy this whole, th this whole like score part, and actually put it outside of the link. 
and then it could just sit on the side. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So then we're going to need another div to just wrap this whole thing. Type flex, maybe a little bit of gap. Now this is what that would look like. With the full. And then I'm going to make, if possible, we'd have this take up the full width. Although I don't know if a, oh, yeah, that kind of works. And then up on this top level, let's do item center so we can center the score. Okay, just like that. Now we have the upvote, downvote over here. And then I might have some, some like hover styling. Just so you know which one you're clicking on. Like, so you kind of hover. This one, how about the, so like the upvote turns green and then the downvote turns red when you hover. Okay, I'm gonna turn these into links. We'll just wrap the link to, we'll give it a blank path just real quick. So we implement that row. Now we have a blank link around the upvote and a blank link around the downvote. Now let's implement this path. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to config routes.rb. And then let's think about where do we want to do this? Do we want to do it in here? Probably we want to do it inside of this one because we don't want to have to nest it all the way in the forums. We go in here, we can say resources. So we could, we could create two controllers, upvote and downvote, or I think what I want to do is just a vote controller and then we could pass in upvote or downvote as an option. So I have resources, votes, controller, and we can go and create that votes controller in the controller file. It's gonna be class votes controller inherits from application controller. And we're gonna give it a create action. And then inside the votes, well, since we're nested in the post, we're gonna say at post equals post.find params post ID. And then we can say post.update score with the new score, right? And then the new score, we're going to have to set that. So we can say, or we could just say if, say if params uh, vote, or we could do a case statement, case params vote when upvote and all we're going to do is we're going to update the post score with at post dot score plus one okay and then when it's downvote we'll update it with minus one and get out of this case statement and at the end Let's just redirect to oh, at post. We'll redirect to the post page. We have to pass in the form also. So say post.forum and then post and we'll put it in this array so that I can figure out the URL. And then when we go and click here, we'll be able to do that. So let's go back to the post path. And uh, another thing I'm gonna quickly add is the score count. Add another kind of element just to display score. Uh, this will be post dot score. Now you'll see we have the score here. We can even make that a little bit bigger. And then we can downvote or we can upvote. Uh, we don't have these paths set in, so let's change this link. So let's start with the upvote. So this is going to go to post votes controller or not not votes controller. It's gonna go to post votes path. Sorry, this has just been a long video, but we're getting through this. We're almost at the most important part. Okay, so in the votes controller, we're using a param vote. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll just set here, vote is to upvote. And then we'll make this do a data 
turbo method post, so it actually makes a post request. Now if we refresh, oh, and we forgot to add the post. So since it's nested, we need to pass in post uh, before we pass in the vote param. Now if we click, oh, oh, right. Uh, actually, I redirected to, um, I redirected to the post, but actually, I guess we're just going to the forum since we're voting on the forum page. But you'll see it looks like this. We can upvote on the side. And downvote doesn't work, so let's add downvote. So for downvote, we can basically just take the same thing, drop it here. So it linked to the post votes path passing in post and passing in the option, except for change this to downvote, and then leave the data turbo method. And now we go over your downvote, and you'll see it could go. Now, usually in Reddit, you only get one vote per person, right? So that's one thing we haven't uh, solved with this, but this is MVP. If you wanted to do one vote per person, basically all you would do is you do it like the likes, uh, if you watched the Instagram tutorial I did, Instead of using score, we would just say post.votes. We would create a new vote, uh, referencing the user and the post, and then we would just check if that exists. But this is almost like a more simple way of voting, although obviously not very fair, since everybody can just click as many times as they feel is right. But this is how you can do a very simple Reddit voting system. Great, this is the second post. Hey, this is great. And then also, let's say we want to rank it by the score. So right now, this is showing up, the, up at the bottom, but since it's a higher score, it should probably go to the top. So to do that, we can go back to the forum show page. And remember how we were ordering by created at? All we have to do is change that to score. And then Descending would mean actually, yeah, it gets the, the highest score first. And just like that. See, that's a higher score. Now let's make this one higher. Let's get this to 10. Oh, look at that. And just downvote, and it will automatically just go to the bottom of the page. This is pretty cool. Wait, why is it? Oh, because it's they're just switching back and forth. Huh. Yeah, this is cool. Uh, oh, another thing is see how the score is kind of affecting the style. We can fix that by going to underscore post partial. Right, wherever we had that score. And just adding a fixed width. And then, it probably doesn't need 16. We can do like 8. Right, and then it'll always take up that width. And then we could just make it... Overflow hidden, just in case it like goes up to the thousands, which uh, this will take forever. We could do that in console pretty quick. Post dot last dot update score like a freaking million. Restart the server. How would that look? So yeah, it just kind of like you know goes over. I don't really know how we'd want to display. We probably want to abbreviate it, which that's a whole other logic that you could add in anyways i feel like this is a really cool type of video and it shows you a lot about what you can do with rails how you can get this forum type of look for your app and build stuff like the downvoting the upvoting yeah there's really so much customization that you can go from here so many places that you can go yeah if you guys are still watching right now i really appreciate it. if you stayed this far in the video you guys are the ultimate supporters and it really means so much but I hope you're looking forward to new videos. This is just one that I wanted to do because I thought it would be uh, exciting, cool. Yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next video. So please take care. Have a good day. Yeah, bye.